Hi everybody, it's Legal Beagle from Legal Beagle Panda Creations, and today we're going to deal with a couple of more windows, and we're going to deal with these different window panes. The move, the rotate, the scale, the shear, the align, and the duplicate. Now we've talked about some of these buttons before, but we're going to make sure that we cover all the all of the windows and the bases for those buttons um, and how those actual things can work in Silhouette Studio because a lot of these buttons are names that we know, we kind of understand what they do, but just how those things work in Silhouette Studios, at least how I've found them to work in Silhouette Studios. Okay, here we are in our move window and what we're going to do is you're going to, um, you're going to be able to move your items in a particular fashion other than just clicking on it and kind of just dropping and guessing and looking at the numbers up here to see if you have it correctly. So the first set of things that are in this move window are the directional arrows, which once an item is selected, you can move it up, down, left, or right. Also remember that you can use the directional arrows on your keyboard if you are so inclined. Now the move by function, this is what I find cool about this, and I'm just going to kind of eyeball this and do this really quickly. If you have a line and you're following a recipe and it calls you to move it from a half an inch or a quarter of an inch in from that edge, wherever that edge is on your paper, you can go ahead and line those up, put 0.5 that you want to move it by a half an inch from where it's located at that edge, and it's going to move it in for you. And with this box, what you need to know is that if it's a negative number, it's going to move it in to the left. And if it's a positive number, no minus sign, it's going to move it to the right. Okay, guys. So we're going to talk about move to corner. And basically, it's exactly what it sounds like. It'll take your item and move the uppermost edge of that corner, the right, the top and the side to those particular locations. So let's say I go here and I make this two, and I make that two and a half, okay? You can see it moved over slightly, but the edge, that uppermost edge moved to two and two and a half, okay? And that's where it's going to remain. So let's say we do the circle. And if I take the circle and I say, move this to two and a half, by one and a half and I click apply again it moved very slightly but what it did was it took this down the top of that circle is at one and a half and the side of that circle is at one two two and a half okay so that's how you can move it so if you want to move an object to, to a place to that corner of that object to a particular place you can use this move to corner um, I like to do that to line everything up and then start from that position is how I like to use move to corner. Okay, now let's talk about the move to center. When you click on a particular item, it gives you the boxes on the outside and it gives you this little tiny crosshair in the middle. And that little tiny crosshair represents the center of this particular object. So let's say I want the center of that object to be at I'm working on a five by five card and I want the center of that object to be at two and a half by two and a half. You see how it moved the center of that box up to two and a half by two and a half. And so that's a good way to do for placement and it'll do it with whatever item you're selecting, whether it's the circle and I say, hey, I want the middle of that circle also at two and a half by two and a half, okay? And it puts that circle right, the center of that circle is right there. And the center of this object, no matter what size it is, is gonna be right there. So that's moved to center. So now this cross here is going to be a really good dovetail into the rotate window because you can move this cross here. And I know you guys are going, huh? So we're going to talk about the rotate window next item and we're going to select our leaf here. And you know that this green button up here is our rotate, our normal kind of you 
can take your mouse and pull it and go, ah, I think I want it. Yeah, no, I want to turn it this way. Now, if you do that, and if you've ever done that, and then you've tried to get it back to center because you don't like what you did and you can't figure it out, easy way to do it. Go to the rotate two and click zero. It's going to take this little green dot. You see how it has that red dot back to zero. If you want to make it to a simple 90 degree, take it to 90 degree. Again, it's controlling by this green dot. You want the green dot at 180 or you want it back at zero, you do the same thing. Now this button up here rotates your image, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise to a to those pre-described areas, but it's not controlled by this piece right here. So if I tilt this this way and bring it a little bit off of the of the regular rotation and I still click 90 degrees, it's going to do 90 degrees from that last point. Whereas if I click rotate two, it's going to take it back to the natural zero line or the natural 90 line or the natural 180 line. You can also custom rotate by however many degrees or custom rotate to a specific degree by using these sliders and this button and these buttons here. And that's simply your rotate window. Okay, as best as I can tell, with the little cross here, you see that the little cross here is there. Or if you go to your number Roman numeral one, the cross here is here. So let's say you want to rotate this based on this item. So when I go to rotate, if I swing it 90 degrees, it's going to rotate based on that center pull of your crosshair, because remember that was your center. So it's going to rotate around that center. So no matter how you want to rotate it, it will be able to rotate when you pull this little rotate button. It's now not rotating around itself, but around where you put its center. So if I go back, let me go back a couple of clicks and show you again. Now, if I have my one like this and I do the rotate, it rotates around this center, okay? But once you can pull your crosshair out and have it rotate, it's still going to rotate, but around its center. We've now moved its center, so when you click on 90 degrees, it's rotating 90 degrees from its center, which is no longer right at that dot, but is in the center of something else. So if you want to place things at a degree away from something else, this is a good way to do it, whether it's dash marks or hash marks. Just remember, when you move that little cross here, that's where your center belongs, even if it's a fake center, from because we know that the original center of that one would be on that one and in the center of that one. You can move your center and then you can do your rotational pull of your item around its new location of its center. Okay, so that's how the crosshairs and the centers come into play under the rotate button. Now let's talk about our scale window. Now the most reasons that I use the scale window is because you can specify a dimension size. So let's look at this rectangle box here and let's say I want to go, no, I wanted it to be um, four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay. And so now I've got my card size and I want to put this leafy image in there and I want to make that, now I want to make it 200% bigger. Okay, and so now it'll fit on my card. Or I want to make it 50% smaller. So you can do some kind of the sizing like that. I don't use this section as much, um, but I do use it to specify my, my, my size of something instead of going like this and trying to get uh, get to exactly where you want it to be. You can just punch in the numbers and then have it go to exactly the correct size that you need it to be. Okay, let's talk about our share window. So we have design and I've actually kind of shared it. So let me go back to unshare already. 
this is our original design. And what shearing does is it kind of like, I can think of it as shaving or slanting your item. And so it has preset um, degrees for horizontal or vertical, or you can do custom shearing where you select. Um, if once your item is selected and you want to slant it by 30 degrees, there you go. There's the slant for 30 degrees. If you want to custom do it, you can kind of take this slider and you can do that. If you want to do it by the handles, because there are handles, you see those little handles that come up, you pull those and those allow you to share it. If you go, wow, I hate all of the sharing I've done, just come up here and go to unshare. So the sharing window lets you give a little bit of different look to your particular cut, whether it's already a cut that's made or it's a shape that you're trying to kind of give that different angle or give that different, haha slant to. And that's what I know about the sharing window. Okay, here we are in our line window. And we've used this button or I've used this window pane before. You can take and you can select the objects that you want to select. And if you hit any of these buttons, it's going to do exactly that. It'll either move all of the objects, align them to the left edge, the right edge, or right into the middle. So let's click left, align left. And see how it takes all of those pieces and all of their left edges are aligned together. Let's undo that really quick. And let's say we want to make kind of like a city line or a skyline. You can go ahead and click align to the bottom. It'll take all the pieces and make sure the bottom line is level. The same thing works for the middle. All those pieces are going to align on that middle line level. If you want to make sure that you're spacing between objects, let's say you make several circles to go across in a row as a design element on something, then you can go space horizontal horizontally and that'll make sure that the space in between each of those objects are even. Now remember if you want to align two objects together and you want to make sure that that square is in the center of that circle, select both of those items and then click center and what it's going to do is it's going to align that square right into the center of whatever whatever object you want to make. For center to page, I came to the page setting window first to show you that I selected that I'm going to be working on an A6 piece of material right here. And it's easier if you know you have that card front, you have that size, you're going to be putting it down on your paper um, and you want something cut from the center of that, whether it's a picture or whatever, you go ahead and you select that size or you select, you can custom make whatever size you want. Now we're going to go back to the align button and the center to page. So I'm going to move my flower over here and let's just say this is going to be a card front and I want that leaf to be in the center of my page. I have it selected. I click center to page and it does exactly that. It puts my item right in the middle of the center of the page. And even if I want to resize it, or do something else with it, I can go ahead again and click center to page and it's going to move it to the center of the page. Okay, here we are in the replicate window. <laughs> Beginning I said the duplicate because basically it does a lot of duplication. So the way this window works is that if you want to make one or two of the same thing, you can duplicate it to the left, huh, to the right, above or below. If you go simply down all the way down to this bottom box, you can duplicate three in a row, four in a row, or in a column. Um, and you can also do where you would make it a mirror left and it makes it a mirror image of that, of that piece. So it allows you and it allows you to do above, below in terms of the mirror. So if you remember when we talked um, about the modify button, the welding, we flipped one a mirror to make it the card, to make an image, the card shape of the jukebox. So remember about your mirror left or if you're making a cut where you want to put it on the back of something or iron on or something like that. Now the other thing that this box does is that you have down here where you can select this item and say you just need to make a whole bunch. 
you can go ahead and select fill page. And it's going to fill the page with as many of those as it can for you to cut out. So when you know that you need to cut out more than one and you just want to just flood the whole page with them and use your 12 by 12 piece of cardstock, you can go ahead and you can select fill page. Right, let's talk about our this rotate window right here. You can take an item, select it, rotate by two copies. It'll make two extra copies on the one that's already there. I'm going to go and highlight all of them and then I'm going to click weld. And now you see I've got this cute little star pattern. That's how replicate, well that's one of the functions of replicate. If I take it back a notch, let me just pull it up here close. You can see that we got our three layers and that all we did once we selected them all is weld them and make them into a new shape. So that's one of the great ways of using Replicate. There are advanced options for you to tell it how many copies you want of the Replicate, um, the position you want them in, but I stick mostly to the basic options of the Replicate. Okay guys, we've talked about all of the different buttons that or window panes that fill up this little section of our silhouette uh, window. I hope that that gave you some jog some memories and some reminders of how to use some of the buttons or if you didn't know give you a little bit of new information um, about some of those buttons. As some of you may know or a lot of you may know that Silhouette um, came out with a version 3 of their software. I have downloaded it but I haven't played with it yet. Um, you guys should really check out the Silhouette Plus forum um, online if you haven't already checked that out. They've got a lot of tips and tutorials and they've, you know, once you sign up, the signing up is free and they have a whole section that's starting to talk about um, version 3. I plan to play with it hopefully this weekend. Um, but for the moment, I'm going to stick with working with version 2 because I at least I feel comfortable working with this version um, right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and happy crafting.